finally, after three months of use and abuse on my bike, today we run through the user experience that I've had with the Watt Team Powerbeat G2 Single Power Meter. Weighing in at $259 US, this puppy has to be the cheapest power meter out there on the market today, but there's also another option. For an extra $99, you can get the sensor pre-glued, so you don't need to go through that process, make it a $358 power meter, and that's the experience that I've been sent out, and here's what it's all been about. Just going over the specs quickly before we do the unboxing, Powerbeat Single is a left-only direct measurement power meter, so there is a strain gauge in it. There is a pod on the side of the crank as well. Now I'm willing to test this out with a pod hanging off the side of the arm. I'm not a big fan of pods, but this is quite low profile and at a quarter of the price of my Vector 3s, it was definitely worth checking out. Uh, other features includes pedal smoothness, torque efficiency, rechargeable battery, firmware updates, water and dust proof, that's kind of handy. Lightweight, 21 grams, compatible with Bluetooth Smart and Ant Plus devices. Well, it has two modes. It can be Bluetooth Smart or Ant Plus. Uh, power accuracy, plus or minus 1.5. We'll go into that in a sec. That's probably not too far off. Um, also, all um, compatible with a user-friendly app. And yeah, in short, in summary, everything on the box, it does what it says it does. Okay, now, diving into the details, let's go. Okay, something we all love, a little bit of unboxing therapy. Single pod for the single side. You can see that it's the same box there for the dual side if they were to send that out. User manuals, uh, the USB charger, which is the charger for the dual kit. There's two extensions on the end of that. And the calibration kit, if we had to need that. Okay, into the crank itself. And we'll dive in and have a closer look of the sensor that's being glued on there or the strain gauge. Close up of the pod itself. And how the two connect, you need to put a washer in just to fill that gap there. So there's no extra uh, strain on the pod when you screw the pedal into it, makes things nice and flush. Okay, over to the bike. Rotor twin power comes off. It's also a change of bottom bracket here too. So in with the standard bottom bracket on the Giant, the Altegra crank set goes on. And it's just as simple as putting the left crank arm on. So if you already have one of these crank sets on, it's just a simple installation of the left crank. Washer on, pod on, pedal on. Away we go. And plugged in. Job done. Ready to ride. So installation and configuration done. My first ride was done outside, comparing it to the PowerTap P1 pedals, which we know have been quite solid in the past. First 20 minutes or so was done without calibration just to have everything settled down. And we see a little bit of difference there. And then from there on, for the rest of the ride, things were actually pretty good. Now, the PowerTap P1 pedals, around about the same price at the time as the Vector 3s, uh, tracking along quite well. Within a few watts here or there, and also the response time. Super fast, up to around 530 watts there. So all looking well. That was ride number one, happy days. Now onto ride number two, the next day. Things change and I don't know what it was. What we have here is the unit uh, just, it's tracking very, very well against the P1 pedals. 
it was just a little low. So you can see there on the graphs, everything tracks nicely, which is a good thing if it was well out or doing something entirely independent of the other power meter, that's nasty. It's tracking well, it's just reading low. So I had about a 10% discrepancy there between the power tap pedals and the Watt Team power beat. They were tracking perfectly, so it wasn't a left right issue or an imbalance. They were just, it just needed the dial turned up a little bit. So out with the calibration kit that comes as part of the self install, I filled those water bags up to 4.5 kilos and went through the calibration process. Here's what that was all about. That took about half an hour and the results were no different to be honest. It was still a little bit out when I was running the same tests. So I shot off an email over to the team. The first thing they noticed was I actually calibrated the unit with the power tap pedals. Now these are heavier pedals. So they didn't factor that in with the calibration process. The answer was to switch over the Durace pedals which are a lot lighter and it shouldn't impact the calibration process. So I did that same process again but with the Durace pedals it brought it closer, but still not close enough. I was only within 8%, so it, it still wasn't there. Again, it was tracking perfectly, but it wasn't matching. So I pitched to the Watt Team support desk. Maybe I could just change the weight a little bit in those bags, maybe do some static weight tests. Static weight tests aren't possible with this power meter. We can do those with the SRMs, quarks, and vectors, but the Watt Team power meter only sends power. It doesn't send torque, so we can't do that with uh, other head units. So I pitched to them, look, maybe I can just reduce the weight a little bit in those bags and do the recalibration. How does that sound? And they're like, that's not the answer. Please do not do that. I was still unhappy. 8% still out. So I did. I took 450 mil out of each bag. I did the calibration process again. And surprise, surprise, this thing was perfect. Here's my next couple of rides. Have a look at this. Absolutely brilliant. That tracks amazingly well up against the PowerTap P1 pedals within a few watts. Absolutely brilliant. Even a sprint there, so similar, 938, 924 with a power beat, single-sided versus dual-sided high-end power tap bar, P1 pedals, doing very well. Some steady state efforts here. It gets a bit messy at the high end, but tracking-wise, absolutely phenomenal. And not too soon after that, the Vector 3s arrived. So I got to put those up against the power beat as well and keep everything honest. Now, you may have seen the video that I've posted up Mount Bunnyong, about an eight minute or so climb with a two power meter side by side. Things were very, very good. So again, a little bit of that data here, just jumping in and the tracking of that. Now this is a thousand dollar power meter versus a $258 plus the install, either a quarter or a third, depending on which way you look at it. That was super impressive. So from that standpoint, that was quite surprising. So as a budget option, looking at that data, Super impressed. It just needed that calibration fix. So I sent that information over to the Watt team guys. They were super happy, but again, I'd gone against their advice, but I was happy with that data. They were happy that I was happy with the data and that's kind of brilliant. So what they do need though is a little scaling knob or a little volume adjuster. So if people are having the same issues that I did with the self-glued or the factory install, that this still may be a one-off with my unit that it was reading low. You may have one that reads spot on out of the box. And if you do, fantastic. But if not, we need that scaling factor. Maybe, you know, 1%, 2%, something like that, because that would have fixed my calibration issues that I sort of had to hack around with, with the water bags. They've agreed to it. They said that's probably a really good idea. That should be coming out soon. Stay tuned on that. 
that'd be a fantastic addition for people to line up all their other power meters, maybe even line up to their smart trainers as well. So the ability to match power meters is gonna be brilliant. And again, for a budget power meter, that's a pretty cool feature to have. So once that initial calibration issue was absolutely sorted, it's been very smooth sailing. So a few long-term observations that I've sent over to the team. The battery life has been great. Uh, you charge it with a USB device here, which is kind of handy because you can go out to the bike room or the shed or the garage um, with a battery pack and just charge the thing overnight. It'll charge, no worries. That's kind of handy. Also out on the road. I've had to charge it probably three times in three months. That's usage dependent. I should ride more, but it holds charge pretty well. The unit's been tested in all conditions and passed. Uh, super hot riding over in Adelaide. It's also been freezing cold and rain and water blasted on the roof, driving to and from Adelaide. So that's a thumbs up in my books there. Now every now and then it drops to about half or a quarter power reading. I don't know why. It's only for a few seconds. If I stop pedaling, start pedaling again, it comes back. The team will be having a look at this unit once I send it back. So just an observation there. It wasn't a showstopper, um, but it did occur. Now bumps and rough roads are something people have mentioned that causes problems with this. And I took it over some rumble strips and yeah, it does drop to zero. But look, I'll, I'll give it a break for this because the rumble strips I was going over were pretty harsh. So I wouldn't be riding this in Paris-Roubaix if you wanted quality data, but for general road riding, general bumps and knocks, cyclocross, mountain bikes, I'd say it's fine. But as I said, Paris-Roubaix, you probably wanna go with something else. As I mentioned early on, it's either Ant Plus or Bluetooth Smart. You have to choose within the app, the configuration of that. And for Zwift iOS and Zwift Apple TV, I had to toggle on the third-party application support or third-party support for it to read full wattage rather than just one single-sided. So beware of that with a single-sided power meter. I also have to mention the support team have been fantastic in replying to all my emails very, very quickly. And also they've been very forgiving when I went and calibrated the unit myself and got it reading spot on. So let's hope to see that dial feature soon where we can get that power meter reading absolutely spot on for everything else. So I'd love to check out the self-glued option. I've read some horror stories. I've read some success stories on that. So maybe the double-sided one will be coming next and we'll have a look at that. It's also said to handle the rumble strips a little better. So in wrap up, for a quarter or a third of the price of the other power meters that I've recently got, that has performed extremely well. Even with those little niggles of the, well, initially the calibration, which should be sorted with that app update. Those dropouts, the team will be looking at those. So again, hopefully they're all nailed. And uh, even the pods, I'm not a fan of the pods, but hey, they didn't get in the way and they took a beating. So there we have it. My take on the Powerbeat G2 single power meter, definitely a thumbs up for a second or third bike. It'll be a third thumbs up whenever I can get an extra arm if they have that calibration option. Um, it's a no-brainer. It works with Zwift iOS and Apple TV, Ant Plus head units, all fun and games. That's been a great three months with this unit. I was very, very impressed. Again, at that budget price, what team, you've done a great job. Let's see what you do in the future. Thanks for watching. We'll be back soon with more.